Today what we're going to talk about is the unreliable character, unreliable narrator. What does that mean? So this is when you're reading a story and you're not really quite sure that the character is telling you the truth or that you can trust the things that the character is saying. So how do you write that type of character and why would you want to? So we're going to talk about that today. You have a story to tell, but you don't know where to start. Let me show you how to free your story. I teach you how to write and how to dig deep in your soul to release your story and make a difference in the world. Welcome to the Julia Monte channel. If we're just meeting, I am Julia Monte and I welcome you to my channel where we uh, give you some writing tips every Friday. Um, so just to, before I start, I just want to remind you to please hit the like button and the share button and to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified next time that my uh, video is released. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the unreliable character today. This type of character can be a lot of fun to write uh, and it can also be a, a challenge to write because what you're doing is you're creating a character that the reader isn't sure they can trust so typically it starts with the reader reading a character and and obviously you believe what what the character is saying so whatever the character is thinking whatever they're doing at the beginning you think it is what it is right it is what the what the character is saying but then things happen during the novel that make you question that wait a minute he just lied to his best friend about where he was why would he do that uh you know we, we've watched him do something or we might notice that the character's just acting strange he might be doing things that uh that he shouldn't be doing right um so and sometimes it can be a a uh, just a character that might be too young, or might be naive, or might be innocent. Uh, the novel *The Good Sister* by Sally Hepworth uh, she does this where you're not really quite sure which one of the characters that you should trust or or mistrust or distrust, <laughs> and the reason is because one of them is on the autism spectrum, and she doesn't really trust herself. Uh, and then you have her sister who you it seems like you can trust her, but, you're, but she does some things where you're not quite sure if you can trust her either. So you've got really two unreliable characters here. You're not sure who's telling you the truth and which story um, you, you can believe, uh, which makes it a lot of fun to read because you're not quite sure what's going on here. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons that you would write an unreliable character is because it does make it a lot of fun for the reader. Uh, but it could be with with a sister that is slightly autistic. You're you're she's just a naive character. She's not doing this because she's a bad character. Um, you're just not quite sure that you can trust her. She doesn't know, know that you can she can trust herself. So sometimes that might be a reason why you you write an unreliable character. Um, so it could be a villain, right? It could be it's it really is a bad guy, and the character is you know can't be trusted because he's the bad guy in the story. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why, why you might want to have an unreliable character, um, but what, what I want to talk about, and one of the one of the things that I think, I'm, since I'm currently writing an unreliable character, uh, it's what got me thinking about the you know the whole idea. And uh, one of my questions as a writer is like, okay, but am, is it, will the reader know that I'm writing an unreliable character, or will the reader just think like? wait, you said this on this chapter and now the character is doing this in this chapter. Maybe you're just a bad writer. This is, you know, you're not being, you're not sticking to the character of your, of your hero, your heroine. Um, so the, the character, it, it, will it seem like your character is just acting out of character? Like he's not really being himself that you're just, as a writer, you're not doing it, a good job portraying this character. That's part of the fear. Of, of creating this type of character for me was well okay I want my reader to know that the character is unreliable that I'm, it's not just me presenting the character one way and now presenting the character a different way so uh, I'm going to talk about that right so not so much why you would want to I think you probably would know why you want to create an unreliable character but 
how do we do that effectively so that the reader is with us, right? The reader knows that, okay, this is part of the story is that the character is unreliable and now I can't trust the character. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that today. Um, and the way that I want to do this is that I just want to share the kind of the realizations that I'm coming to as I'm writing my book. So uh, I, as I'm writing my character, my character doesn't really know that he's unreliable. He starts to change during the story. So he starts off very logical and okay, but he goes through these transformations that it's going to be up to the reader to decide if it's it's if it's a mental illness or what's going on here. But he starts to change during the course of the novel. And um, so I'm going to share the things that I'm discovering about writing an unreliable character and hopefully that will help you. So the first thing that I want to share is that the character, um, an unreliable character most of the time doesn't know that he's unreliable. The things that the character does is seems completely logical to that character. Um, and if you've ever read like a, a novel where there's a villain, uh, this is always true, right? So there might be this 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 character, this evil person who is killing prostitutes, for example. And why is he doing that? In his mind, it's very logical. In his mind, he thinks he's ridding society of these, you know, uh, immoral people. Let's say, uh, if you've watched the the show Dexter, right? He's he's uh, everything that you know. He kills bad guys, and why does he do that? Because and and, and it's completely bad right it's completely crazy he, he's not he's not portrayed as a villain but really he is right he is a villain because he's killing people uh he's killing the bad people that are doing bad things in society and he thinks logically you know he in his mind he's lo it's logical that he's getting rid of these bad people these serial killers so they can continue to do that in the, in the process he's still committing a crime right he's still doing wrong um so uh, so, but it doesn't have to be a villain, right? Any any time that you have an unreliable character, uh, most of the time that character doesn't realize that what he, that he is unreliable, and he thinks that he what he's doing is logical. Uh, the exception can be like the the book that I mentioned, The Good Sister, where we have one character who is autistic, and she she knows this. And so she doesn't even think she's reliable. She 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 questions her herself and her mind and, and what she thinks. Um, but most of the time, the, the the character doesn't really realize that they're unreliable, and they 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 seem to themselves like they're logical, like what they're doing and what they're thinking is correct. The second thing that I'm discovering that as a writer, okay, so I'm, I'm speaking as a writer, not as, you know, not as a reader, is that as a writer, we can't judge that character because you find yourself thinking like, God, she's doing something completely horrible or terrible. Why would he do that? Why would he make that decision? Well, because it, it's good for the story. <laughs> you want to do this. You want the character to do these things that are are crazy or that are you know that that don't make sense but do make sense to him uh but you can't judge that you're not there to judge this character on whether what he's doing is right or wrong i can't judge if i'm the writer of dexter if we if what you know if it's bad to kill bad you know serial killers because i'm writing from the perspective of dexter right if i'm if i'm if i'm one of the the, the writers for that show I'm writing from the perspective of Dexter, and Dexter thinks that what he's doing is logical. So I'm not there to judge what he's doing. I'm just there to create a good story where Dexter is doing what he's doing, right? So your unreliable character is doing whatever they're doing, uh, and it's not up to you to judge that, but just to write it and just to share it with your reader. All right, and my fear that I mentioned, right, that uh, the reader might not realize that I'm writing an unreliable character and just think that I'm a poor writer, <laughs> well, then how do I fix that? Okay, well, you don't just dump, you don't just create this character in chapter one that is perfect and then go to chapter two and say, now he's doing crazy stuff. You know, not not usually. Uh, you build on this, right? You slowly build the unreliability of the character so that it starts to make sense to the reader. So one way to do this is, you know, again, over time a little bit, he makes little changes, does little things that start to 
uh, leave a question in the reader's mind. And then the other way is to have other characters there, right? Do your other characters can judge that character. The other characters can question that character. They can think that something is completely wrong. Um, so let's say, you know, the character lies to his wife or whatever, and his best friend is there. He can maybe not say anything, but maybe he can look at him strangely, or maybe he can question him and say that, uh, sorry, my dog is coming in. The, the character can say, uh, that's not what, that's not what happened, right? So other characters can react and that's going to mimic really what your reader is doing. Cause your reader is going to go, well, wait a minute, that's not what happened. Why is he saying that? Why is he lying? So you can have other characters react and start to question the character you know, your main character. And then that starts to build that unreliability. And another um, movie that I really loved, uh, and it was a book as well, was A Beautiful Mind. And uh, it's a great movie to watch because the character doesn't realize that he's unreliable. Uh, and then you can see at some point how other characters react to him and realize that, mm, okay, the, the, something's not right with this guy. There's something wrong. Right. And um, so you can see how the other characters are reacting to you. Uh, it's, it's a great movie because for, for the first part of the of the movie, you don't realize that he is unreliable. You're actually believing everything that's happening in the story. Uh, and then you have that realization kind of at the same time that the other characters have a realization that there's something wrong. Uh, and he is unreliable. Okay, the other thing that um, I want to share with you, you know, again, is if you're writing this type of character, is that you can't be gentle with the character. Like, you have to be able to write those cringe-worthy scenes. You, if the character is doing something completely terrible because he believes that it's right, you have to write those scenes, right? You can't, you can't pull back on that. And that can be sometimes a little difficult. So as a writer, um, again, remember you're in this character's head. You're, you are this character. You're writing from this character's perspective. And so those terrible things that this character may do, you have to write those scenes and you have to write them believably and you have to, you know, not pull back on that and not be gentle with it, but just actually write it the way that it would really happen. All right. Another thing is that um, if you're going to write an unreliable character, you're probably going to want to write from first person because it's the easiest way you're, you're writing from that character's perspective. So it probably wouldn't work as well as a in third person. I mean, I think it can be done, but it's probably easier to use first person. Um, another thing to remember too, that would kind of go, I don't know if it goes hand in hand with this, but one of the things that, um, you know, as, as I'm writing my story in first person and I'm thinking, well, you know, because it is first person, almost every story that is in first person has a little bit of an unreliable character because it's always from that perspective and the first person character can't know what everybody you know everything can't know everything that everybody else is thinking <clears throat> and is only going with the information that that character has so we might you know we, we might think of a character that's being intentionally misleading uh, as being, you know, a bad guy or even unintentionally misleading that, the, you know, this is not a good character. It's a bad character or a bad person. And that's not necessarily too true. Like, so like I mentioned, there could be a, a character that is naive for some reason. Maybe he's very young and you really can't trust what this character is saying because he doesn't have all the information. But that's true for all first person characters. All first person characters only have a limited amount of information and they're making their decisions based on that information that they have. So in a sense, they're all kind of unreliable because they don't have we don't know everything. We're all unreliable. We only know what we know and we can only share what we know. So, um, you know, we, it, it can cause some confusion. It can cause us to be unreliable when we make a decision and we think we're making the best decision and then we come to find out that it's not. So an example could be, let's say that you have a character that joins a terrorist organization, right? Because he thinks he's, he doesn't know it's a terrorist organization. He thinks that it's an organization to help. And uh, so he's really unreliable because he's telling you something that is not true. Like this is a great organization. This organization is going to help our country. It's going to do wonderful things. It's going to get rid of evil. But 
as the story progresses, you start to realize that this group that this guy is telling you is wonderful really is not wonderful. Okay, they're, they're bad people that are going to do bad things. Well, your character doesn't know this. So he's he is unreliable. At some point, he'll hopefully un realize this and make you know change his mind, uh, and then not become unreliable, right? But uh, but if he's making decisions based on only the information that he has, and he doesn't have all the information, or he believes one thing, or he's being misled by other people, he really is unreliable, um, even though he doesn't think he is. Okay. The next thing is that the characters that these are really complex characters, right? Uh, so again, and it's I don't know that it's something that I'm learning. I probably knew this, but I'm realizing how complex these characters are. Um, and I think a good example of this is The Joker, the movie The Joker. Uh, this was a movie I was not going to watch because, eh, you know, there's so many uh, superhero movies and all that. I've seen so many of them. I was kind of tired of them. And it's like, oh, do I really want to watch a movie about the villain? Um, and then the answer was, yeah, I, I guess I kind of do, right? We, we all kind of want to get to know like the villain and what, why is he the villain? Uh, how did he get to be the villain? And, uh, but I, I was really glad that I watched it because it was such a good movie and it was done so well because it, it gives us a glimpse into what an unreliable character is and why he's unreliable. And the writers, I think, did a good job of showing um, the pain of mental illness and the, um, you know, the struggle and how it affects, you know, how it affects this guy. Uh, just really well done, I thought. Really good. Really sad. But um, I thought, you know, this is a great unreliable character because obviously he doesn't know he's unreliable. He kind of did, though, a little bit, right? He knows he, if you've watched the movie, he knows that he has problems. He knows that he has a mental illness. And before it gets to be so extreme, he tries to get help, which he doesn't get. So he does know that there's a problem. But as he, as the, his disease progresses, then, then he doesn't really realize that he's being as you know crazy and evil as he becomes um, but they do a good job of showing that so um you know they, they're they are complex characters they're really fascinating i think to see what goes on in the mind of um you know somebody who's unstable and uh, i think the, the last thing i just want to say over that that i've kind of learned is that it's okay to struggle <laughs> with writing this type of character you know you might want to go back many times and again, put yourself into the mind of this person and go through the scenes again and say, okay, is this, is he seeing this, you know, is, is it making sense the way that, to him, the way he's seeing this? And am I showing, am I leaving enough clues for the reader to understand what's happening here with this character? Uh, why he's lying, why he's acting irregularly or whatever is happening. Uh, you want to show that. You want to give clues to the reader so the, the reader is following you. Uh, so going back and doing that. But it's okay to struggle with it because it is a struggle and it is uh, it is a challenge because you're, you're, you're having your character say things that you know are not true and do things that you know are uh, you know bad or that are that are just gonna get him into trouble uh you're you know so it's almost like you're, you're you're having you're you're doing two things you're in your mind two things like you know the 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 right thing that should be done or should be said or you know what's really happening but the character doesn't and he's living in his own world so it's it is it is kind of challenging so it's okay to struggle okay it's okay to have uh to have to rewrite a lot of scenes or to have to rethink things and to have to go back and fix things it's you know it's what we do as writers and the other thing too that i wanted to mention is you know because again i was thinking well how how am i how will the reader know that this that this is my goal this is what i'm trying to do with the character um and i decided really not to worry about it if i'm giving the reader clues if i'm doing things like having reactions from other characters if i'm um, I, I just want to give the reader the credit to understand that to know, right? Uh, the, the reader will figure out what's happening here. So giving my reader more credit is one of the, one of the things. I, if, if if the character does something really strange, but I've set it up so that he can follow that, right? What what happened for the character to, to do this? Uh, what reactions is this character having in his own mind? So let's say the character steals something. Uh, it, it, it shouldn't come out of the blue. It should be like, okay, you should watch the character make the mental decision to steal. Why is he stealing? Because he's going to give medicine to 
his sick dog. Um, okay, so that might make sense, right? Uh, that that might be logical, even though he's doing the wrong thing. Uh, but uh, what if that's he continues to do that? What if he continues to do things and he lies? He starts to become unreliable, right? He starts to become that you can't trust this character because he's doing things that are not right. Um, so I, you know, again, I decided I was in, I was just going to give my reader credit, my credit. But if I'm if I'm writing it correctly, then the reader is going to figure out what's going on here. All right, and the other thing that you know, you kind of worry about sometimes as a writer, right, is that you're writing a likable character. Like, we want our characters to be liked. We want that the reader to like our characters and to like the story that they're reading. Uh, so you kind of worry about that, I think, sometimes, too. So if I'm, I'm, I'm creating this unreliable character who's not really a nice person, uh, and he's not the villain of the story, he's actually the hero of the story, then is he going to be unlikable? Is that going to be bad? Is that going to turn the reader off? Uh, and here is another place where I think we need to give the, the reader a little bit of credit, uh, realizing that, yeah, uh, you know, there are different types of characters. They don't all have to be likable. We don't have to like them all. We don't have to like the Joker. Uh, we don't, right? He's, he does bad stuff. <laughs> but what we do want is for the character to for for the to be sympathetic in some way, right? For us to be able to understand why this character is unlikable. Um, I don't think it's our job to write likable characters all the time. Um, so there's different stories. Some of them, the character is going to transform and, and his arc is going to create a better person and he is going to become a likable person. Maybe he starts off unlikable, but he becomes a likable person uh, at the end. But he doesn't always have to. And I think, you know, maybe some stories uh, we actually enjoy watching the character pay for his mistakes um, because he's unlikable, but it's still a good story. And I think that's what we should worry about more is creating a good story. Um, somebody had posted the other day on social media the movie uh, Falling Down. It's with uh, Michael Douglas, I think. Yeah, Michael Douglas was the, was the character there. Um, and he's uh, this guy who's uh, leaving his oh he's about to get oh, he gets fired or something he's this white character living in LA uh, he's very tense and he's very upset and he's very he's like you know you, you picture this office guy uh, I don't know if you've seen it but um, anyhow he it's 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 how he goes through his day and all these crazy things happen to him he meets this like white supremacist he's like you're just like me and he's like I'm not like you uh, he meets these gang members who I think try to rob him all these things end up happening to him in this day um, and he's I, I don't know yeah I, the, people were saying he was a bad guy on this social media thread and I was thinking I don't know if I would consider him a bad guy I don't even know if I would consider him unreliable really um, but the reason I bring this up is because um, at the end oh, I don't want to ruin it but you know, things don't go well for this character um, because he, he makes some bad choices but he wasn't he wasn't really a bad guy like all of these characters to me were all kind of victims of society and, and this box that they put themselves in but um, so I don't know that you feel sorry for him at the end. It's not like this this character, this Michael Douglas character, completes his arc where he actually changes and he realizes life is good after all. It's, it's not like it's not that type of movie at all. But it was a good story, um, and I think if it had been this perfect arc where this guy, um, and I think I mean I think what makes him unreliable is that he does change like he becomes this person that he doesn't really believe he is uh he thinks he's a really good guy and he and, he, and he's a victim of society in a way he is uh, but anyhow the care it doesn't have to be like this character arc where everything is wonderful and that you even like this guy because some of the things that he does i'm sure a lot of people did not like him he wasn't a likable character he was sympathetic in a way because you kind of feel sorry for him um, I kind of felt sorry for some of the other characters there too because it was just a picture of society that is very that was very sad to me. Um, but anyways, um, not worrying about the character being likable I think is a, another thing. So write your unreliable character. He does not have to be likable, uh, but he has to be sympathetic in some way, and he the 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 reader should be able to understand why he's doing what he's doing. Um, and even if he at the end things go 
poorly for him and he doesn't end up with like this happily ever after wonderful transformed arc as long as it was an enjoyable read and maybe makes the, the reader think a little bit then I think it's a good story and I think that you know your your reader will follow you and will like it so anyhow I hope that this uh, has been made you think a little bit maybe about writing this type of character uh, helped you um, not worry so much about you know ha having it be hard or difficult and to try to write it because actually I think it's a fun challenging type of character to write and you know helps us grow as writers so if you want to try to write <laughs> uh, an unreliable character to try to grow and try to become a, a stronger writer do it even if it's just an exercise all right i hope this has been helpful if it has then please hit the like and the you know the thumbs up button uh share the video and subscribe to the channel all right i'll see you again next friday